welcome back to the Agent Goldmine. Guys, let's face it, paperwork sucks. So what do you do when you know you should be out there closing deals, but you're spending all your time bogged down in paperwork and it's draining the life out of you? Well, today's guest is me out of Lexington, Kentucky. I, in my past life, have closed hundreds of transactions as a solo agent, a team leader on my investor business. And how? How did I do that? Well, one of the key factors was by leveraging the power of transaction coordinators. So if you're looking to hire a TC, this one is for you. Expect to learn. Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. So if you're looking to hire a TC, this one is for you. Expect to learn where to find a TC. Red flags during the interview process, costs to expect, what to do once you've hired them, and stick around to the end if you're curious about knowing when it's time to fire them. I really like these episodes where it's just you and I. So just Shelby and Allie here. And I find it super fun and very applicable to our business right now because we both have moved. We both are getting licensed in a brand new state and we're both going through the process of hiring a TC. So if you've never hired one, this episode is definitely for you. If you have any questions about the checklist that Shelby has uploaded as the golden nugget, giving you the step-by-step of how to hire the best TC or multiple TCs for you, hit her up. You can find the checklist on theagentgoldmine.com. See you there. Shelby, <laughs> word on the street is that you're looking to hire a transaction coordinator. What is going on? Wow, the street is so chatty. Okay. So you guys probably know I am in Kentucky now, Lexington, Kentucky, and I just got licensed a freaking week ago. Very exciting. So I am like doing all the things again to discover a new market, like figure out who's who, get the local lender, the attorney, all that stuff. And a piece of that puzzle, which I have an entire preferred vendors list that I'm like actually going down and I'm being very tactical about how I find these people efficiently, which we can talk about another day. But one of the pieces on this preferred vendors puzzle is a transaction coordinator. Because if you've listened to Ali and I for more than a day, (laughs) you know that we don't do paperwork. We just don't do it. So yeah, with that, I thought it might be helpful to share what I am doing during this process and you guys can learn from it, the listeners. And for those that don't know, you haven't even started like with any transactions yet. So you're doing this before you even have any transactions. So yeah, I I want to make that point (laughs) that a lot of people (laughs) think, let me just do a couple of transactions. Let me learn on my own first. What a waste of freaking time. (laughs) What a waste of time. I just can't even fathom the, which is, I know that's going to sound, and people listening, I know they're like, these girls are like on another planet in regard to their like <laughs> their assertive, lazy shit. <laughs> well, a lazy shit, but also like how strongly we believe in how paperwork is not the best use of your time, but we really do believe it to our core. But yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing is I am not like starting from Google. Like I'm not going on and being like Google transaction coordinators in the area, which is definitely something you could do. It's possible. But what I am doing is I, now that I have a couple agents in the area that I found through EXP, which Ali and I both lean heavy on the fact that EXP is a worldwide brokerage, a single brokerage. It's like super fucking helpful to find and connect with people. So I found local icon agents in Lexington and I reached out to them asking for their preferred vendors. And based on that, I was also like, who are your favorite transaction coordinators? Who's your favorite lender? Who's your favorite attorney? And I've been meeting with them. And so the pro tip for the transaction coordinator is that you find people who are already using them, loving them, think they're awesome, who aren't just agents, but also the vendors. Who does the lender love working with? Which attorney is like, oh my God, this transaction coordinator gets me all of the shit on time, every time, love her. And so by asking those type of questions, you are cutting the fat, you're pre-screening on someone else's pain to find someone awesome who already works with hopefully agents within your brokerage because every brokerage has their own systems. Like some people use Dotloop, some people use Skyslope, there's DigiSign, there's all this shit out there. And then there's also brokerage specific forms. So like finding someone who already knows what they're doing in 
the bro- like working with the vendors that you're planning on working with is going to make everyone happy, which is really helpful. As you are venturing into this transaction coordinator realm, realize there are actually two types of transaction coordinators. There is the third-party pro and there's the in-house patch it together type of transaction coordinator. And what I mean by this, the ones that I've already mentioned so far is probably a third-party pro. So this is someone who has a transaction coordinating company, probably works with different clients, has their own processes and checklists that you can fall into. That's one option. The other option is if you already have your own checklist and your own email templates and everything built out, then what you can do is find someone who's not a third-party pro and integrate them into your own system. But the key is someone, whether it's the pro or whether it's you, has to have systems and processes to follow in order for this transaction coordination piece to be successful. But Allie, what was your question? When you're meeting these people and you're, you're, well, first of all, I want to back up and get more clarification on you reach out to these top performing agents, mm-hmm. these icon agents. That's where I started. Out? Yeah. Yeah. So is that via a uh, phone call, text, workplace? Girl, is work. You know, I don't talk on the phone. Okay. You do not talk on the phone. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, I, I it was workplace. Yeah. Which I fucking Which, love. L- explain workplace. Let's, let's dive into what the hell. Yeah. It is, is EXP's version of Facebook. Everyone in EXP is on there and you can DM them just like you could DM anyone in on Facebook. And since everyone's on there, you get really fast replies. So you're not calling, you're not emailing, you're not bombarding them with another text. It's like this internal hub for all of the people and everyone's nice to each other. And the other thing that's really helpful too is that each state has their own state page in in group page, I don't know if it's a group page, whatever, in workplace. And so like coming to Kentucky, I was licensed in North Carolina. I just literally searched Kentucky State Group. I went there and at the very top of the page is every bit of information you could ever fucking need. It has all of the the principal brokers, the managing brokers, the admin staff, transaction, like people in charge of overseeing your transactions, onboarding, offboarding, They have all of the frequently asked questions, the pinned of here's your state license fucking shit bowl, like all the little details that you're like, God, where are all those things? It's all pinned right there. So easy. Were you accepted into the state page before getting licensed? I was because I am a DM queen. (laughs) And I reached out to the burger. So I was like, hey, and I didn't say this, but that's one key too. I, when I'm trying to build new relationships, I am like the fucking nicest, most grateful, you know, complimentary, you know, I love a compliment sandwich, Allie, like I'm all about it. So like ahead of time, I'm like already laying the foundation of you will fucking love me. I am going to be your favorite agent. You don't even know it yet. So I found like on the state page, you can see it even though it's private. And I messaged individually all those people like, Hey, like I'm coming from North Carolina. I'm getting licensed Kentucky. I'm so excited to join, blah, blah, blah. Is there any way you could let me in the state page ahead of time just so I can start getting my systems and processes laid down? And they're like, girl, absolutely. You know? Yeah. And (laughs) on top of that, there's also, so not just the state page, which is usually closed only for those that are licensed in that state already. There's also so many freaking other groups, open house groups, referral groups, both like worldwide within EXP and like statewide or sometimes even citywide. So as part of my checklist for onboarding for anybody that joins, I'm always like, dude, if you have, if you know nobody, yeah, join a state group. I think we, we're going to bring it back to transaction coordinators because those of you who clicked on this episode to learn how to hire a TC, I promise you're still going to get it. So step one would be to reach out to other local agents, ask for their preferred vendors list. Step two, reach out to their agents and their closing attorneys in particular, being or their lenders and closing attorneys in particular or title, being like, who do you love working with? Which transaction coordinators are amazing. So now you're gathering information on, you have a little list of TCs. Then you're going to reach out. Actually, I usually stalk them first. Like I go on, I'm like, who is this chick? Because the thing with a TC for me is I'm not just looking for a paper pusher. I'm looking for a partner in fucking crime. Like we, you know, transactions can be, they can be hell. And they're a lot less helly if you have a feeling of a best friend to tackle the world with. 
So that's ultimately what I'm looking for. I don't know when I'm going to find that, but it's, it's coming. But anyway, okay. So you're stalking these people and then you're going to reach out. And when you reach out, like I just did a t- same template that I did individually to each one of these TCs. When they reply, you're paying attention to everything. Like you're paying attention to the timeliness of replies, their signature block, their writing skills, their attention to detail in like capitalization and grammar, their puppiness, their sense of humor. Like I am analyzing all of that because they're at, I, when I approach it, I'm like, Hey, are you open to taking on more clients, AKA agents, AKA me? And I'm like essentially a client. So this response from them right away is a really good taste about how they will interact with clients. And when you're hiring a transaction coordinator, you are hiring someone who is potentially also the face of your business. This is so fucking important. If you have them forward facing, which not every agent does, I am all about having the expectation with my clients is transaction coordinator is a valued part of my team. Like we are in this together. We're all in this collaborating and I don't hide them behind the, my front, but that is also a personal decision, but I'm going to breathe now. Allie. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's go further into that. Where, what would be the TC's first client facing email or, or text or anything for me? Yeah. In your okay. process. Yeah. So it's, it's after the property goes under contract. If it is a buyer contract to close on the seller side, it's a little more muddy because I have a listing coordinator and a transaction coordinator, but on the buyer side, it's like, we went under contract. And by the way, I have already set the expectations being like, Hey guys, Oh my God, we're going under contract. This is amazing. Just so you know, my transaction coordinator is going to be reaching out with next tech. She's amazing. And I like fucking hype them up. But then the TC will send an email that's congratulations, you're under contract. Like here's what to expect. And it has like earnest money, timelines, inspection, like the whole thing. But also back in the day, by the way, I haven't done transactions forever. So this is all recall, but they would also call in text, be like, Hey, call. Hey, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Katie from five pillars, realty group. I am so excited to help you guys through this transaction. You know, if they don't pick up, you send them a cute little text, but it's like right after it goes under contract. Is that what you're looking to do this time around as well? Have the TC call them? I have not yet decided, but it likely depends on my target audience. So right now my target, my avatar, my client avatar is a little older, in which case, yes, the answer is yes. If they're younger generation, they don't fucking want (laughs) a phone call. So that is something too, where it's, I'm really big on, it depends because it does depend. It depends on the client. And we're here to be the chameleons to bake the client, you know, have the best experience possible, not you know, fuck those people who are like, well, I like phone calls if they're an agent. I'm like, well, if the client doesn't like phone calls, don't fucking call them. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. 100%. Okay, cool. So you're blasting out on workplace, looking for icon agents, like proven agents Mm -hmm. that already have a process. Who are you sharing this process with? Who is your business partner? Do you have any fear of, well, not fear because there are a ton of TCs, but how would you know if a TC is going to be too busy? You know, because I feel like a lot of people will say, yes, Shelby, let's work yeah. together. Not okay. knowing the amount of volume you're going to bring, not realizing, and maybe they already do realize they're kind of overworked already. Yeah. You know? Dude, that's a part of the next phase. So when they reply, depending on their response, I will set up a Zoom call with send them my Calendly. And if they can't figure out the Calendly or the, you know, the, all of these are little clues, guys. <laughs> so, but they book an appointment and it's 30 minutes and we happen to call. I'm like, oh my God, so nice to meet you. What's your story? How long have you been at TC? By the way, listeners, I do have this in a checklist. Of course, Allie and I have, we're the queens of checklists. So if you want this checklist, actually I could upload it in the, in the, should I do that? In the golden nugget, Allie? Golden nugget. Golden yeah. nugget. Okay, cool. So I'll upload it there. But yeah, so you hop on the call, you build the rapport, you're excited to meet them, ask them about themselves. And then I always also ask like, how long have you been a TC? Are you licensed? Those type of questions up front in one of the categories, which is actually towards the end, but it hits on exactly what you're talking about, Ali, where it's like capacity. It's okay. You know, who have you worked with in the past, but also who are you working with now? Are they individual agents? Are they teams? How many files can you work at a time? How many closings do you do a month roughly? And what is your max? You know, and Allie, you're totally right. They might not always tell you. I do think that you can read between the lines a lot. So far, my favorite lender that I've met here is nearing burnout. (laughs) I hope she doesn't listen. Well, if she does, whatever, it's the truth. So I can just feel it. I'm like, this girl is 
really, really amazing. And she's busting her ass and working really hard. But I can sense the burnout just around the corner and the capacity is probably not there for me long term. But in the beginning, do I think it would be a great partnership? Do I think she's amazing? Yes. Can I learn a lot from her about Kentucky? Yes. But also I'm going to keep my, I used to call it the bench. I used to keep filling the bench because everything has a life cycle contractors especially have a fucking life cycle, you know, the good for a moment. But anyway, all that to say is read between the lines. And also you can have more than one person that you try at a time. Yeah. That, yeah. That's exactly what I did too. When I first got started in the business, what okay. else is, what else? Okay. Do you what else is there? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. So you're, you're hopping on the call, you're building a rapport, you're finding out how long they've been at TC, are they licensed? And then dive into kind of their work experience. Be like, okay, let's just say that we decide to move forward. What does working together look like? And this is me asking, do you have a fucking process? They don't know that's what I'm asking, but they should have a process. Absolutely. Okay. So if I'm working for you on the buyer side, as soon as you go under contract here, you'll have a link to upload the documents to a portal and fill out all the information I need to get started within the first 24 hours. Well, first of all, you'll automatically get an email. This is, I'm making this up, but you'll automatically get an email saying that we've received your file. And within 24 hours, I will have sent out that first communication to the client. So when you are talking to the client, let them know that the TC usually reaches out 24 hours, you know, after we go under contract. If someone starts like that and can tell me that I am already like, oh my God, I love you. But flip side, if someone's, well, I mean, you can just email them over or if you want, you know, I'm that's to me is you do not have a set process or you have a process, but you're not able to communicate it. And TC and communication are like PB and J. So yeah, but from there, so they explain their process. I ask if they have it written out and I'll just be like, oh my God, I love that so much. By chance, do you have that in, you know, something that you could send over to me so I can just get eyes on and really absorb your process and be prepared for when the time comes. Also ask if they have an agreement that outlines like lanes, you know, what, and you know, let's see what else I have. By the way, this is all in a checklist, but yeah, a clear and complete outline of like TC versus agent responsibilities. Is there a line? What do you expect from me? What should I expect from you? What were you going to say, Allie? That, that is the most important. Well, I mean, everything's important, but I feel like that's the, (laughs) once you find one, knowing your lanes is, is the most important because some people will avoid that question or not even know to answer that question. And then when the time comes, when you never got a form back in time or, you know, whatever it is, agent thought it was TC's responsibility. And TC was like, you know, you're the freaking agent, you know, and there was miscommunication there. Mm -hmm. So 100% and I also kind of am in the belief that everything is negotiable. So even though the TC has their own process, depending on how solidified that process is, for example, a lot of TCs are only contract to close with, with my TC. I'm like, dude, how much more can I pay you to mm-hmm. do the offer as well? The buyer broker agreement, like, I, cause I told them I don't want to do any paperwork and they said 50 bucks more. And I was like, so <laughs> yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah. So just like, I would say, even if they have a process, if you're going to be bringing a business, right. Enough oh for them God. to change their process. Maybe like also they kind of think, still think outside of the box. I'm 100% with you because that's my thing. I want them to have a process. Like I, I want them to have thought it out and laid it out, but exactly what you just said, Allie, the minute that I know that they have their shit together is when I start trying to push my own limits. I'm like, okay, well, have you ever heard of what's happened? No, you know, I go there right away. And you're totally right. Okay. So in my, and I would say, you know, in my previous 
transaction coordinator, they also, cause I just talked to some girl who she, she, in her list doesn't schedule inspections. And so I was like, in my previous one, you know, they really scheduled all the inspections. It was amazing for both the client experience for us to have control over the process. Is that something you'd be open to? And she was like, yes, like I am so open to anything that makes sense for our re- re- working relationship, as long as we can put it into a process where we both know what to expect. And I'm like, okay, I love you. When do you want to get married? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, before you carry on work hours, when a TC says mm-hmm. I don't work weekends or I don't work nights or, or whatever it is, what, what's the question that you're asking in there? I, I think that that is a little bit of a red flag. So I know, I think that the a good way for them to say, which I would totally respect is I try very hard to work within, you know, nine to five or nine to six. I do know that real estate is one of those crazy industries where sometimes fires do happen. Like most of the time they're not, most of the time they can be avoided with our working proactively. But in the case of something that is really, you know, time sensitive, of course, I'm going to, you know, this is a team we're all working together and I'm not so strict on those rules that I won't be a part of the team to help it get it to the closing table. And for me, that's the answer I want to hear. I love the idea of them having boundaries and knowing that generally this is my expectations, but am I so rigid in them that I will not bend, you know, if the contract was going to fall through No. So that's kind of my thought on that. Yeah, 100%. And that's where I think it's the responsibility of the agent to know if you have clients that can only view houses on weekends, chances are you're going to put an offer in on a weekend. So ask them up front before you hire them. Would if I give you enough time, if I let you know on Friday or Thursday that I have clients coming in for the weekend, could you make an exception a couple of times or like a somewhat of a regular exception if I give you enough heads up to write an offer on weekend? Dude, totally. Yeah. Managing expectations. Totally. Okay. More questions that I ask are, how do you collect info for the handover? The reason why I ask this is because if they do not have a process for collecting information up front, they're going to be peppering me with questions throughout the transaction. And I would much rather start up front and give every detail, like lock doc, lockbox code, location, you know, the all of the like little fucking details. And so if they don't, I mean, these aren't like I'm not working with you if you don't have a transaction input sheet type of thing, but it's something where it's, okay, is it possible, you know, if they don't have one, I actually have an old, you know, we used to call them teal sheets. And if listeners, again, if you like want an idea of what a transaction input sheet looks like, the information to collect up front, Ali and I have that. So hit us up. But would you be open to I filling this out up front just so I make sure I give you everything ahead of time so that way we don't have so much back and forth? Of course, they're going to be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. That and then and- from that information, that this is where I think a lot of agents will... And the right thing to do here is as soon as they have all the information that they need to draft an offer or all the information they need to do the inspection stuff, however your state does it, at that point, take everything of what they need and add it as a canned email to your to your email. So that way you're sending it for me, in my case, it's buyer email number three is drafting the offer. Yay, we found a property, we want to we want to place an offer, I copy and pasted everything that my TC needed. So I literally just copy and paste. Congratulations, we found a house that we want to place an offer on this is what I need from you. She they email the clients email it back to me. And all I do is just review it and forward. That's it. Don't think about this shit anymore. As soon as there is an input from the TC, that's it. That's all you need. Totally. And just templates will save you so much time on all of this. Like the systems, processes, templates, that's how you create an actual machine of a business. If you're scrambling every time for every bit of information, then you fucking hate your life. Yeah. Okay. I also ask, what do you do? What are the timelines associated with what you do? Because I'm really big. God, the high deep personality is I want it done. So I'm constantly battling that in my head. But if I have, you know, they told me, hey, this part takes this long, then I can relax mentally until that date comes up. And then I'm not relaxed. But actually, I don't relax that well. But <laughs> is there really? and then, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> is there anything you won't do? I like asking that hours of operation. You already hit on that alley. Yeah, what happens if something urgent happens outside of those hours? Oh, something else I ask is, will you use my preferred vendors? Which the answer is yes. I mean, the answer should be yes, that the transaction coordinator should use your vendors. But also, I think it's really helpful to let them know, hey, if there's someone you love working with, if you have a really good working relationship and they crush it for you, dude, I'm open to trying them as well because you're the one who's coordinating with with the fucking closing attorney. If you love their paralegals, 
girl, we're a team. <laughs> I'm all about the flex. And that will, they'll really appreciate that too, I think. A lot of TCs are new. You know, like I, I somewhere along the line, someone is teaching, if you are a brand new agent, try being a TC for other agents. Yeah, and I that. <laughs> what kind of back ass shit is that? You know, like what? How? How? What? Okay, what would you do if the, the pool is limited? If the pool is limited, I would still find someone. If the pool is zero, I would probably go for like a fucking substitute until I could find someone who is really good. And what I mean by like substitute is the, so for instance, Skyslope within EXP, there's Skyslope, which is the transaction management software. They have TCs. So they're the ones who you can pay to manage your file. They're not going to do everything that I want transaction coordinator wide, probably. Maybe they do. Actually, I don't fucking know. I could look into that. But what I would probably do is some sort of like a, like a patch fix while I was scouting for talent and potentially refining my own systems. Because from North Carolina, we had the in-house, we had our own systems and own processes like to the T with email templates and milestones and timelines and like every little bit that you could need. So what I would probably do now in this situation is I would find someone for the meantime while I just took those systems, built them out to be Kentucky and then hired someone in-house. That's probably what I would do if I couldn't find like a third-party pro. Are you, I kind of want to go back to developing that, that feeling, that sense of knowing when someone's overworked. Yeah. Because you have high people skills as you sniff your armpit. (laughs) (laughs) I was looking for a hair. You know when they get, yeah, fuck you. But I mean, the armpit call is normal. I sniff all the time. We're sniffing over here. (laughs) I'm like, you're so personal. She's sniffing her own armpit on air. (laughs) How do you, this is something that I struggled with, you know, I'm like, I, feel like you're overworked, but mm-hmm. I can't even describe that. You know, I, I ask how many other agents they work with and what yeah. that volume is, but everyone's limits are different. So some people could only be tapped at, I don't know, 10 transactions a month. Some people way more. Can you go more into that feeling? I know you love feelings. What's that gut instinct? Like it's, it's really uh, hard to describe because I really do feel like I can, I can just tell based on Okay. And it it all depends on based on personality types as well. So some people will have a lot of volume and still be calm and have their systems dialed in so much that they really can handle a lot. And, you know, when they look and tell you, you're like, okay, yeah, that's true. I believe you. Whereas other people will tell you, and I've worked with so many of these people because they're usually ESFJs on Myers-Briggs or they're like high S's on the disc. And so they really want to please. They like want to, they don't want to tell you no. They're like people pleasers, you know, but they'll do this thing where they get almost like pinched and a little more high, high, what's the pitched where they'd be like, Oh, I'm fine. Like I'm fine. And you just know they're (laughs) not fine. (laughs) And those are the people you got to watch out for because they're never going to tell you that they're actually dying. And then things will just start slipping through the cracks and then it will crush them because they don't want to let you down. But really the moment they let you down was when they told you they were fine. So it's this like vicious little cycle. And I don't know if that helps, but there are definitely tells for that specific personality type. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And okay. So I want to talk about maintenance. You've Mm -hmm. hired one, you've hired a team, you found one, or maybe you found Mm -hmm. one and a half, you know, you have one on the back burner for, to test some, some out, some out. How do you make sure that you and your TC are getting along, they're doing what they're doing, you're doing what you're doing. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 303- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Well, in the beginning with any new hire, it is a lot more work up front. So, and this kind of just goes into hiring, but you know, 
upfront, you guys sink in on your expectations. You're doing this well right now, but you have an agreement in writing. But then also letting them know that first transaction or first couple of transactions, I want to be super in the weeds to really understand your process if you're hiring a third party pro. And again, this goes back to the compliment sandwich. You're not being like, I want to be CC'd on everything so I know exactly what you're doing. I want to learn your processes so we can really be on the same team and I know exactly what you're telling people so that way I can reinforce it in my conversations and we can both look amazing. You know, so that is the same thing. You are literally asking for the same thing. The first one makes them feel like they have a boss who's looking down on them. The second one makes them feel like you're a team and they want to share. Am I? And I could be wrong. That's my own personal opinion. Ali, do you see the difference between the two? Oh, 100%. And and it's so, I don't know every other agent's business, but I feel like no agent really does this. You no. know, one of the most used TCs in Tucson, I can just tell, I, I know I have a better relationship with her than any other client that she's working with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, mm-hmm. so, okay. So you're CC'd on the emails. Do you stay on them in the future? What does that look like going forward? Yeah. From the first transaction in, in, Okay. I think that having a set, like at least weekly sync in the beginning, you know, either if it's a quick Zoom, it should be a Zoom probably where you're like, okay, what are you thinking? How am I feeling? What am I doing that's pissing you off? Like (laughs) that I don't even know about. Give them a chance to voice how they're feeling. And then you can also be like, okay, so what I noticed was this, just curious about this and always come from a place of understanding. Don't come from a place of you didn't or you should have. It's okay. I'm just trying to understand this piece of the process. At what point in time do we tell them about X, Y, and Z? That's how you ask instead of being like, you forgot to tell them. (laughs) Those are just two different ways of saying it. But anyway, in the beginning, you're like Zoom, you're syncing with them once a week. And then also just in general, I believe in 30, 60, 90 quarterlies, which we can do in a whole nother show on like leadership and, you know, stuff like that. But like the 30 day mark, here's what you're doing well. Here's where I think we can improve. Let's talk about your goals. Feedback for me. You're doing that 30, 60, 90 day. And then after that quarterly, but overall maintenance. And so I love a tattle sheet. And I hate that they're called that. One of my, <laughs> one of my high S's from way back in, you know, she used to call it a title sheet, but really it's like a positives and a areas of improvement sheet. And what it is, is like throughout the day with a TC, you're, they're going to do stuff that you don't like. They're going to say something in a way that's like gross. They're going to forward an email without explaining what it is or polishing. There's going to be little things. And so by having a, I used to just do a word doc, which I still do, but a word doc to like snip it, paste it into the work doc, put like a little date. And then you have, by the time your 30 day comes around, instead of you being like, God, I know that she did some things that pissed me off, but I fucking can't remember, nor do I have the time to go back and dig through email traffic. You're able to just pull it up and be like, oh, fuck yeah. Like on these dates and times, this is exactly what happened. So now I have concrete and situational things to explain to her in areas to improve. I keep saying her, it could be a dude. I've had an amazing LaShawn Shipman, shout out, you're amazing, you're dude and you're TC. But also same thing with good things. Make sure you also do, oh my God, that was amazing snippet in there. So that way you can do your compliment sandwich. Did I even fucking answer your question, Allie? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you do. Well, okay, to to be continued in another episode that we'll do Mm -hmm. on 30, 60, 90. Yeah, and And then so weekly, weekly maintenance, you know, Zoom, hey, what am I doing that's making you Anything. upset? What am I yeah. doing that I sh- what am I not doing that I should be doing? Please mm-hmm. let me know, etc. At what point do you stop doing the weeklies? It it depends, but I mean, probably by the 30 day if they're crushing it, it could be more it depends on like how much they're crushing it, how much you feel like you still need that you're not on the same page. When you get to the point where you guys are an extension of each other's brains, you don't have to do that. You can But what I find like with my favorite TCs in the past is we talk all day, all day, every day anyway, like boom, 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 back and forth about, you know, business things, but also like shit talking, like, you know, the situation and potentially the clients. And (laughs) like there's just a lot of like fun banter. And if you get to that point, you probably don't need the Zooms. You definitely don't as much. I love it. I have awesome wait, my list like, of questions. Oh. Two more things. Okay. So the oh, other cool. thing I ask in during the like interview is when do you get paid? How do you get paid? How much do you get paid? What happens if it falls through? At what point do you get a fee for having done all the work and it falls through the day of? And also, this is just a little pro tip out there. Can I pay you extra to handhold me through my first 
transaction, like really fucking handhold me. So that way you're showing you value their time, but also you have the opportunity to learn if you're in a new state. Apparently things are fucking weird here in Kentucky compared to North Carolina. Shit is way different. So that, and then the other thing is consider asking them to do the disc assessment or Myers-Briggs and sharing their results. That's another thing. We have breakdowns on how to analyze those for disc and Myers-Briggs for hiring. But yeah, you're right. We'll do that in, in another day. Oh yeah, that was a lot of talking. Are we done? Did we do it? We did it. <laughs> if you have any questions, further questions about TC stuff, hit us up. Allie the Agent, The Shelby Show, here to share checklists. Be a bro and share this show. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps.